We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to this surprise episode of the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and I, I don't think you or I really expected that we were going to be recording again this soon into the summer break, but also on this specific topic within the summer break and silly season. No, I mean, I knew that we would get an update in silly season or the summer break, but I just didn't think it would be like, you know, 12 hours after saw. Fully. I mean, I honestly, I thought if we were going to have like a red flag emergency episode, it was going to be about what Red Bull um, was going to decide to do about Checo, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But no, clearly this episode is because Carlos Sainz has finally signed a contract somewhere. Yes, the diamond of the season has confirmed his seat. So Sainz came out and confirmed, gave everybody a huge, you know, press conference of his multi-year deal with Williams. So it's not a one-in-one. It's not a one-year. It is a multi-year deal. He expressed that he is with them for the future for several years to come, which is fine. I already had to like come to terms with this several months ago. So I feel like I'm just piggybacking on all the progress I made early in the year of acceptance. Um, And to be honest, I think this will be an interesting experience for all of us. I think James, him really taking the helm of Williams and separating it, differentiating themselves from Mercedes, no longer being a feeder team like they've been categorized in the past, really getting those top level drivers, him really being able to manage the whole process of the car, not kind of taking over scraps from from other people as the new as the team principal. I think it's gonna be interesting. I'm not yeah. sold, but I think the concept could be interesting. Yeah, no, I, I fully know you're not sold. I, I, I feel like this could be good. It's been very interesting because there really has been like this split down the middle of like, is this a good call or is this like the the beginning of the end of Carlos Sainz's career? Because um, obviously he had a ton of different options. He had Williams who were, you know, full court press on him for a while. Um, there's Alpine because Flavio Briatore wanted someone to make a big splash in the wake of the Acon exit. Um, and then, of course, there was the, the question that we all thought was the obvious answer was, you know, Carlos going to stake slash Sauber slash Audi in 2026, um, which I really, the longer we think about it, I, and, and I think to, to your point that you, you said, um, Mattia Bonato taking over for Andreas Seidel at Sauber for the Audi um, run up. I think that really could have helped influence Carlos's decision to not go there because you had said that wasn't the best for experience for Carlos when he was at Ferrari with Bonato. Um, and, you know, why would he want to go back to that in, you know, such a high stakes, you know, effort that will take a few years to really ramp up that, you know, Nico Hulkenberg is willing to take those years. Um, right. But you know, Carlos, you know, may want something that's going to give, you know, more of a result a little bit faster. And I think that, you know, obviously what Val's presented to him is going to give him what he, what he's looking for. I don't know if it's exactly what he's looking for, but I think it's the best option left. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nico Hulkenberg has, I mean, he has all the time in the world. He's barely hanging on to a seat this year the way it is. So he's like, great. Someone wants to take me and try to start a team. I'm sold. For Carlos, that's, I don't think that's a very attractive offer to him because he wants to win now. Right. But at the same time, Williams isn't necessarily progressing to get him a win next season. You know what I mean? Oh, no, no, no. There, there's, this is, I, I really believe that this is all, you know, in an effort towards 26 and the new regulation. Um, and oh, that's, that's, and, and the, the other impression that I've been getting from what I've been reading is that like, nobody really knows who is going to be successful in this regulation. And all of this is a gamble going to, you know, Audi is going to be a gamble for Nico Hulkenberg and whoever else they hire going to Williams is going to be a gamble for Carlos, whoever ends up at Alpine Mercedes, that's all going to be a gamble, but the real question is, how was that gamble presented from each team? And I think that James Vowles must have convinced Carlos that there was something there that was worth it to to try it out. Well, I think his just very, I don't want to say aggressive, but persistence in courting him, let's say. Yeah. I think, I mean, 
again, to generalize here, athletes have egos and they want to be the best and feel like they are the best. So having, you know, James Wells, who I personally think is well respected amongst all drivers and teams, when you have someone of that caliber coming to you very adamantly of like, you are our driver, we believe in you, X, Y, Z. Um, I that has to feel good and that has to make someone feel good and I think that's at some point there's emotion that plays into it so I think that's that helps uh Williams in that case yeah it it, it has to make it it worth it I, I I feel like it's it's the best thing that Williams could have done and I don't think it's like the beginning of the end for Carlos's career I don't think it's gonna be great and I think the best that we could see is probably Carlos being at the lower end of the points, which is clearly not where he's going to be used to have being coming from Ferrari, but still it it's better than him being in, you know, the Sauber next year, which is going to be a Sauber still, they haven't scored a point. And as we said at the beginning of the season, we were worried that Alpine wasn't going to score any points this year. The longer we go, the more I think that Sauber might actually not score a point this year, unless they pull a miracle out of their hat after the summer break. Oh no, Saber's not uh, not gonna score a point. They won't. Yeah, there's no way that car is trash. But yeah, and I mean that has to also play into it. I think Carlos seeing how they're driving this season is not great. Yeah, um, but I also think it, you know he talked a lot about, and I watched his like press conference or whatever he posted on Instagram, social media a few times, and I think what he said about like restoring you know, a former, you know huge team because we forget Williams was super successful earlier on in their you know illustrious F1 career as a team and so I think you know him saying we want to bring it back to their former glory I think there's a lot of skin in the game for him like being able to turn around a team completely that's really cool so I think there's just enough points that really hit home for him of being a part of something I think Williams and James will probably listen to him more and listen to the feedback, provide solid feedback versus whereas Ferrari, it's like Carlos who all we care about is Charles. Right. Um, so I think that is, you know, he knows what he doesn't want in a team because although he had success at Ferrari, I don't think it was a great experience for him. I'm just guessing. I think his it, success was in spite of Ferrari's right. primary goals. Right. Yeah. Um, so being on and, a team that yeah. actually like respects him and will take feedback, give him good strategy and everything like that. I think that's, you know, he knew what he didn't want in a team and James probably presented something with all the all the things that he was looking for. So, yeah, and I honestly think that, you know, partnering with Alex Albon who is another driver with a lot of good experience and top, you know, top team experience. He did drive at Red Bull for a while, which I know a lot of people tend to to forget because it was, you know, a very long time ago. I do think that it is it is a partnership that will work out better than a lot of the other options for Carlos teaming up with the driver on the grid. Oh, a hundred percent. I think it's the best teammate combination we could have asked for. Something else too, that I think is important to note is that like Alex has been on this journey with James for a really long time. And I think them signing him to a multi-year contract is like them really truly buying into drivers and rebuilding the team and success and I I just I love James and I love that direction I really hope they can come out with a really good car and I know he said in the past like they are super behind for multiple years and that now looking forward to the new regulations and everything I think maybe they can play some catch up so we'll see I don't know I think I think if they were going to rebuild the team and bring it back to its former glory Alex and Carlos are a great combination to do that. Yeah, no, I I don't disagree. I think that a lot of people are worried about how this is going to look for Carlos and Carlos's career, but I really do think that this is the type of project that they're both going to be able to to be able to get behind that when they deliver a car that first of all, whatever car that they have for for next year, I think both drivers will be able to outdrive. Obviously, you know, Alex has been struggling a little bit more this year just because they've been so far behind, but I think both of these drivers unlike 
you know, the current situation, sorry, Logan Sargent, where you have Alex who's doing his best and Logan who's driving a car in the back. I think we'll have both of these Williams drivers out driving the car as much as they physically can to bring some a couple of surprise results, some some shock higher qualifying that they probably should be depending on which track benefits the Williams the most. Um, and that it it should put them on a a better trajectory, especially going into this new regulation. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I'm sad, yeah. but I'm accepting. <laughs> it'll it'll be it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, you know, Carlos had a ton of options. Some were more likely, and some were a lot less likely. But, but I, I I was really set on the idea that he should go to Audi because he had that history with it. And his family has that history with it and all of the Carloses. But I, I can I can wrap my head around him being at Williams. I think and I think it actually looks better than say Valtteri Botas going back to Williams, where he kind yeah. of started his career. Um, I, I I I think that this is a much better look. And we'll we'll talk about where we think Botas is gonna end up. But I, I'm cautiously optimistic that this will be okay. Yeah, I just want to know how much he's getting from Williams. Because historically Williams has paid nothing to their drivers so well to us the, the rookie drivers specifically but also alex is probably not making alex all that is, much money alex either is not making much money either so i'm just curious on how much money they're throwing his way because he was making a decent chunk at ferrari so oh they had to pull me out they had to yeah but i mean that team doesn't have a ton of money to throw around well, they they are, you know, managed by a, a venture capital firm, so it's e- a lot easier to come up with the funds than it was when it was just run by the Williams family. Um, so I see I mean. your point. But yes, yeah, it, they don't they don't have money coming out of their ears like you would at Ferrari who could afford to, you know, give Lewis a hundred million dollar contract per year, allegedly, or, you know, whatever money they you know, they have at Red Bull or Mercedes. So, you know, it's probably it's it's a it's a decent contract or he wouldn't have said yes to it because, you know, for as as much as these guys love driving, they also want to get paid to do what they love. Oh, well, of course they do. Uh, well, I mean, I feel like we'll continue to talk about all of the 2025 seats for the rest of the 2024 season. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, details will come out on his contract. It's not confirmed the exact length. We don't know how much. We don't know if it's like a one in one or if it's two in one. Multi. I think it's two in one. Them. That's what I think so too, but it, I haven't seen it confirmed anywhere. So. I'm pretty sure because because Vows did confirm it was for 25 and 26, and right. I, I think it's like with the opportunity for more. So that's why I feel like it's two and one, which is you know basically just multi year. Um, and I I think if it goes well, they'll keep Carlos for as long as possible. As long as Car- Carlos will stay there, as long as he's right, successful right. there, I think he'll stay. Right. Yeah, and I I think that if Williams nails it in the new regulation, then it could go really well for them. And as a customer team, they also don't have to worry about creating their own engine. They'll just get it from Mercedes and everything we've been hearing from the Mercedes engine for the new regulation has been positive. Yeah, well, <laughs> TBD. we'll see. Yeah, big time. Um, so another TBD that is, I'm going to call still TBD. I know it's been confirmed. Speaking of, you know, seats, um, Red Bull confirmed that it's keeping Checo for the rest of the season. V Carb came out and said we're not making changes to our lineup for the rest of the season. Um, to be completely honest, I think it's way too soon to make promises and commitments <laughs> when you have half the season left. I understand that they are trying to like have their vote of confidence with Checo, but I still think to come out and confirm and say adamantly like we're not giving up on him and we're not making changes I think that's premature I fully think that this is a terrible decision and I don't know what Christian Horner is thinking and you know it's really it's it's interesting because in you know obviously Red Bull has been going through a whole power struggle drama nonsense since you know before the season even started with what was happening with Christian Horner what was happening with Helmut Marco and like all of these rumors have been coming through saying that like Helmut Marco won the power struggle he's the you know he's in charge Christian Horner's a figurehead and Helmut Marco has been like all for getting rid of Checo and getting Daniel back in the Red Bull, hypothetically. Um, But then all of a sudden, that's not happening. They're backing Checo. They're saying that Checo is, is staying. I feel that he is staying for at least 
you know, like for the end of the 2024 season, I think his contract for 2025 is still, you know, a very much in the air, no matter what they have on paper right now. Um, but I, I do think that it's interesting because, you know, everything has been saying that Helmut Marco is in charge at Red Bull now and that Christian Horner is now just a figurehead who you know, speaks to the media because, you know, Helmut Marco says, you know, racist things by accident in quotes um, when he does it. Um, but I... I think this is really interesting. I also think it's a terrible call. Um, and I think that they, at the very minimum, should have given Daniel and Liam the chance to test the Red Bull, um, which I, I don't know, know if that's canceled. Before, them coming out before testing is just, I think it's wildly just not inappropriate. What word am I looking for? Irresponsible. Irresponsible. Yeah. And it just, you know. Checo, and, and I haven't, you know, compared and contrast from like, you know, he scored, I think, like 28 points since Imola this year. Um, and obviously, we, we've we seen very clearly on paper, on screen, just how bad it's been. But yes, Liam Lawson has already tested Max's car. We know what Daniel is going to drive in a Red Bull. Um, but I think that to not do the test that they said that they were going to do, because I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen. And just to say, you know, we're keeping Checo. I think that hands the constructor's title to McLaren this season, unless McLaren implodes on their own. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Zach Brown was popping champagne as soon as this announcement He's came out. He's thrilled. Because oh Max God. can't do it on his own. No, he can't. And with Oscar and Lando driving how they're driving, there's absolutely no way Max can outdrive drive those two drivers. Exactly. And like we, you know, I, I mentioned our, you know, we, we do a lot of polls in our community posts on YouTube um, and not that, you know, 284 votes is a significant portion of the fan base, but, you know, we had 284 responses, 91% of them said, you know, Checo, Checo's got to go put Danny in the Red Bull and put Lawson in the V carb in his seat. But see, I and, don't think they'll do that just because well, logistically- no. Well, no, I know that they're keeping him now, but logistically, I think if anything, they would just dump Lawson in there because that otherwise you have two drivers trying to figure out two cars versus one driver figuring out one car. Yeah, yeah. So then there'd be the whole other drama, which would piss off Yuki if Lawson like completely leapfrogs Yuki into the Red Bull. At least it'll go down slightly better if it's Daniel because he's already been in the Red Bull. But the fact that they're just backing Checo is not good. It, it's just, I really think that it's going to end very badly for, for Red Bull. And, but you know, this, I'm, I'm not okay with this. This sounds more like a, to be just like completely honest, this sounds more like a financial decision than anything because I, I mean, I wonder how his contract is structured. If they pull him out of the seat, how much money they would owe him. I wonder if it would, like, to me, it sounds like they're not doing anything because they would never financially recover. Um, I don't think so, purely because driver salaries are not part of the budget cap. And no, but, but it's still money. I, it's, still it's still money still fully, money. but I think that if they needed to find a way to find the money, that they would. You know, you see it all the time in, like, college sports when, you know, when Colorado had to come up with $7 million to fire Carl Durrell and, and, you know, give him his buyout. Like, they figured out where to get the money. If they really needed to get rid of Checo, they would figure out where to get the money for his buyout of his contract. No, McLaren I... did it with Daniel. Like, you know, it's... it. I don't think it's I don't think it's financial. I think it's well, just it has a to stupid influ- decision. It has to be influenced by something else because if it's purely on performance, they would never keep Checo. So there's something else going on, and to me, fi- like their finances could potentially be a factor, but also there has to be something else. Oh yeah, no, there definitely has to be something else. I just he witnessed a murder or something like that's. <laughs> <laughs> The, you know, the options are endless of what he, of what's keeping him in that seat, but it's not his yeah. performance. Yeah, I just, I still think it's a mistake. I don't think they should keep Checo. And I think that this is not going to go well for Red Bull. I think Max will still win the driver's championship, but I think McLaren will take constructors this year. Yeah. Unless then, Checo, like, wakes the hell up. <laughs> and then Helmet and Christian are going to be pointing the finger at each other. Like, oh no, was that their decision or their decision? They gave McLaren the championship, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, I, I I don't like this as a Red Bull fan. I fully don't. Well, I just don't like it as an F1 fan because we want the best drivers on the grid. And, like, to keep him around, like, he's not providing anything. 
No, he he's, and he's like not shit. performing he's to not the standard of a Red well. Bull. He's dropping from first row to P8. Like, come on. Come on. Yeah. Exactly. We, so, anyway, that means 15 seats down, 16 if you count Checos, but I don't think you and I are, um, and four to go, Steak, Alpine, Mercedes, and V-Carb. Um, so we're going to go through who we think is going to take those seats now, and then we're going to take a look back at our predictions from April when we last talked about the 2025 grid um, and just kind of see see how, how we're looking so far, which is uh, not great. Nope. It's not. So the first team with an open seat is Steak Audi. So Hulkenberg has already been confirmed to move next year. So they still have one seat open. Who do you have, Catherine? Um, I have, and I think this this might be a little bit of a unique spin, but I have Botas staying, but I only have Botas staying for a year to give okay. them time to figure out who they want when Sauber becomes Audi in 2026. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I have Joe staying. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but not for, I mean, it could be multi-year, but I could see it being one just because he brings them in money for one more year. He's a cheap option for another year. They know they're not going to be competitive next year. So I have him for the money. Okay, yeah. that's fair. I think that I think that the real question is what do they want better? Do they want the sponsorship money or do they want somebody who can be a really big marketing draw for the team? Because I think that's the the clear differentiation between the two drivers. I don't know. Um, I think Joe is pretty high up there. He's very marketable and China's I, the largest market in the world. You have to remember but that. only in but only in China, where I think that Botas has a little bit more international appeal. Yeah, but if you put every market together, it's not as big as China. That's I mean, I would like to see like you know driver Actually, wise the the yeah. driver like hi, the hierarchy of of driver preference in China along you know alongside the nationality bias toward toward Joe. Not that nationality bias is is a bad thing, okay. but I'm I'm very curious to see what that be. But yeah, I think I think I think that they will keep one of the two. And I think that the one that they do not keep is probably gonna be off the grid entirely. I agree. All right, Alpine, who you got? I, I've got their reserve driver, Jack Dewan. I don't I do think too. that there is any other better choice but him. He's been waiting in the wings for so long. You know, he waited through Oscar Piastri. Um, he waited through, you know, the Viva La France driver lineup, which we know worked so well. You and I, when um, when we first did this back in April, we didn't think that Alpine was going to change at all. We had the, yeah. the Gasly Ocon lineup, but I think it is for the best that that is not going to be <laughs> happening anymore. And I just think that... Obviously, they were looking at Carlos. I don't think Carlos ever really, you know, seriously considered that. They oh, were looking. He ever got a serious offer from Alpine, though. I mean, maybe not. I mean, maybe it was just briatory grandstanding. Obviously, they also have Mercedes reserve driver Mick Schumacher in their stable as one of their endurance drivers as a, as an option. But I just think that like. Jack doing he's the one who's doing all the behind the scenes stuff he's doing all the you know simulation stuff he he would be like the best option for that team and especially going into potentially no longer being a constructor and being a customer team with a potential Mercedes engine in 2026 that would give doing some pretty good footing to start off his career on the grid yeah no I agree I that's why I have him as well so yeah all right Mercedes. Hmm. I'm still pissed that this isn't Carlos, but... I know, I know, I know. So it's... who is uh, Princess George racing with next season? So... <sighs> I'm doing this to be stubborn because I don't want it to happen. I'm not choosing Kimi Antonelli, which I know is the obvious choice, but I'm actually choosing Liam Lawson to go to Mercedes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I think, and, and to, to spoil my, my V-Carb pick, I think that they will keep Daniel at V-Carb because it would A, keep him on the grid and in the family, and B, if they do eventually figure out that they need to dump Checo, then they will have someone within that they can easily shove into the Red Bull and who will hopefully have a little bit less of a learning curve. Yeah, no, I, I think that's yeah. reasonable. And the, the important thing to know about 
Liam Lawson is that I believe at, from if, if what I've heard is correct, at the end of this year, Red Bull, as in the Red Bull organization, needs to give Liam Lawson a drive or release him from his contract so he can secure an F1 drive somewhere else. And I think if they do keep Daniel, which I think they probably will, that will open Liam Lawson up and make him available. And I think that Mercedes would be a good place for him to go. No, I agree. I agree. So I'll I can do my Mercedes and B car back to back since you went. But for Mercedes, honestly, I know that Kimmy is like the hot topic, but someone no one's really talking about is Mick Schumacher. And I think that would make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna at this point in the game say Mick. Which Okay. He's had several seasons now, I think underneath Toto and with the Mercedes organization he's done a ton of simming a ton of testing I think although he hasn't actually raced for them I think he has more experience than Kimmy and I just I don't I personally do not see Toto putting an untested rookie out on the track especially when he's admitted that he's not ready and he wouldn't have a good seat like there's just he doesn't even have confidence in himself himself how can he have confidence in him I think Mick has put in a lot of time and effort with the team so I think he might get it yeah I just I do want to point out him and I'd love to see him back yeah I I want to point out what what you know what I sent to you earlier is um Toto Wolf said we want the best driver available and today Kimi Antonelli is at the top of the list this this came out I think today at some point um and I think my, my response to you was is Toto sure about this? Well, because but that's like, okay, this is how I'm taking it is like, yeah, he's at the top of our list, but he's not our number one pick. Like there's a lot of hoopla around Kimmy and of course they're going to evaluate him, right? Like he, he's Kimmy Antonelli. They're going to put him on the list. He's probably going to be higher than some people who aren't reasonable, but is he their absolute number one? I don't think so. And he would have said Kimmy is our top choice. Kimmy is, at the very top of the list. Like, he's just towards the top. So maybe I'm reading into it, but that's I mean, how I'm interpreting it. I just, I am I am very firmly in the camp of, I don't think Kimi Antonelli is ready for Formula One. He doesn't even think he's ready. Exactly. So, I know, yeah. I mean, but if he, if he is, then maybe he's a phenom and maybe he'll have a killer season. I don't know. But I <laughs> just, I think that's where I'm at on this whole thing. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree. I, I think it's, you know... Hopefully, I, I hope that they go with someone else. Yeah. And then for V-Carb, so depending on how we're viewing Checo, if we're saying Checo actually does have a Red Bull contract for next year, which I know is confirmed, whatever. Mm, yeah. But because it's kind of up in the air, if Checo is not at Red Bull, I think next season Danny takes that seat. And in that case, I have Liam Lawson. But if that's not the case, then I have Daniel staying at V-Carb for similar reasons as you, they keep him around, they keep him in the family, you know, he's, he's keep him great. available. Cause, Cause I think he's too good to not have a seat next year. And I think, you know, who are there other, I mean, I know Liam Lawson's an option, but other than him, like say he goes to Mercedes, then you have what Botas and K Mags and like they're not that that's not why would you pick them over Daniel? You know what I mean? Yeah, and and you can't put Botas or K Mags in the V carb. You have to put them in the Red Bull because, you know, like Helmet Marco has said, V Carb is supposed to be the junior team, is supposed to be the development team for right. other drivers. And and some people have asked of us, you know, why haven't we talked about, you know, Isaac Hadjar, who is um currently, you know, the the leading Red Bull family driver in F2. He is hold on, Formula Two standings. Uh, he's currently leading the championship by a significant margin. You know, nobody is talking about him seriously. He, he you know, he won at Silverstone. He won the feature race um, at Spa. He's he's actually been doing exceedingly well, but nobody is talking about the top drivers yeah. in Formula 2. It's just been Antonelli, who is, I just closed the window because um, my brain is fried. Antonelli, who right now is seventh in the championship. And then, you know, Ollie Behrman doesn't even matter anymore. He's 15th. Um, 
but, but you know he's still 12th in the one driver's chair 14th but yes oh, he's moving down. he moved down he, he's he's slowly moved down to 14th but i think he might be in for he's he's been in 14th for a while and he's gonna stay in 14th for a while if Dead. things continue going the the way it goes but but yeah i i do you know you know hadjar will get his chance at red bull soon but i you know it it's it's either going to be daniel they already have Lawson. He's obviously first in line. Um, Lawson, I believe, may leave the Red Bull family, especially if they, you know, if they keep Daniel, which they are keeping Daniel for the rest of this season. They're not going to make they're not going to make any midseason changes either. But I, I think that you know Hadjar and the younger you know drivers in the Red Bull stable, they'll get their time eventually. Right now, they're just in a log jam, and unfortunately, the log jam is because they have been forced for many years to keep Yuki Tsunoda on the team because of their ties to honda right but it's not like yuki is over there shitting the bed like you know yuki's doing really, great really this well. year yeah so like yes they're forced to hold on to him but at the same time it's not a bad you know, no i mean yuki has definitely been having a breakout time. year like right. he's he's doing really good there and i think that he's doing really good there and they're gonna want to keep him there but i also you know think that you know over helmet marco's dead body will he drive in the main red bull car yeah, and we already know that he's going to Aston Martin when they change. So, yeah, we can only, we can only hope, and I think that you know that is going to be the best thing for for Yuki, and I also think that's going to be the best thing for V Carb and Red Bull. But that is TBD right now. The real question is when are we going to find out about these final four seats, especially in light of the fact that we now know where Carlos Sainz is going, and Carlos Sainz is the biggest domino that we have been waiting for many many months to fall it has finally yep. fallen he has a seat for 2025 there will be no sabbatical nope and i predict that we will have all the seats confirmed besides stake by the end of the summer break hmm. okay okay i can i can get on board with that yep that's my prediction mm-hmm. Yep. And then to quickly look at our 2025 predictions from April when we had our From the DMs episode trying to protect the grid to now. Ferrari and McLaren were already confirmed when we did that episode. Red Bull, we picked Checo. Red Bull picked Checo. Um, Red Bull. Red Bull now regrets that they picked Checo, and we will see how that goes. I think that there will be some questions, and I think that there will be some adjustments made after the 2024 season. But I, I think that Red Bull is giving Checo the 2024 season, and then they'll they'll reevaluate from there. Um, for Aston Martin, we both picked Lance because you know there was no other option, Daddy and they stroll. did. Daddy Stroll picked his son, um, but they gave him like there's a specific timeline of this current contract where instead it was like it's just, you know, as long as he wants to drive now it's like through 26. And then Haas, we both picked Ollie Behrman, but we po- we both picked him to stay with K-Mags. K-Mags. And K Mags is probably going to be off the grid entirely because Esteban Ocon is going to become a Haas driver. Um, and then Williams, we both picked Alex Albon, and neither of us picked Carlos Sainz. Who did they have at Williams? Besides? You had. Oh, I had Kimmy. You had Kimmy. I, had Kimmy. I picked Joe Guan Yu. That's right. Yeah. Oh, um, but I, just I do want think. Joe to stay on the grid. I do too, but I really don't think he's going to. Like we discussed when we were talking about why Haas didn't go with him, I don't think that his sponsorship money is enough to keep him on the grid, even at stake. I I just don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I think Haas has a certain direction, and I don't think Joe fits that direction, which is fine. Um, And, you know, them saying what they said is is fine but i i don't know i I do i think he's at risk of losing a seat yes but do i think that stake's gonna give him a little bit more time also yes like i know the car is shit and botas has you know pretty consistently outdriven him but botas also has like a million years of experience so would Mm -hmm. i expect botas to be like out driving joe yeah i'm just a little disappointed on how poorly joe has been driving but again, that yeah. car sucks, and consistently they're at the very, very bottom. Besides the DNF, so like if you look at Spa, it was a DNF for no fault of his own. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Like he hasn't been crashing the car; it's just been a bad car. Yeah. And Botas has been completely forgettable all season. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just I think like Botas, K Mag, Sergeant Joe are all in trouble 
of not returning to the grid. Yeah, but I mean, Sargent is probably going to go to IndyCar. All of those rumors about him joining the new Prima team, I, that's that's where he's going to go. He'll he be an American it. in an American he series. It. He tried it. He's the only American point scorer in like 30 some odd years um, in I Formula know. One. Um, but <laughs> by default, yes, but it happened. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see him on the grid next year. Botas, I, I think it's either Botas or Joe, but I'm leaning towards Botas. But I also think that K-Max is going to go to Alpine. I think he'd kill no. Pierre if they were teammates. I think K Mags is gonna go back into to retirement and maybe just like do endurance driving or, you know, drive with his dad or whatever. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. He's had a, you know, yeah. a good career. So Yeah. I mean he he helped Haas when Haas really needed it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um all right. Final thoughts on everything. I hate it all. Um but I'm just <laughs> glad that everything is finally Coming together, the dominoes are falling, like we said. So it is what it is. I I mean, this is what the hundredth time we've talked about the 2025 season and it's still 2024. So am I I'm mostly looking forward to not having to talk about this anymore, to be completely honest. But yeah, I don't know. I hate it all. I hate Checo staying. I hate Carlos going to Williams, but I am now accepting it. So Yeah. We'll see. Remember when your favorite part of an episode every week was contract updates? Like, mm-hmm. look at us now. We're all just, we're just so tired of talking about contract well, we updates. Just, we've mostly been talking about contract rumor updates, not even contract updates. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I, I think I can, I can live with Carlos going to Williams. I'm glad he's not going to Alpine. I, I really, I don't feel good about the direction that Red Bull is, is in right now. Um, and I am very, very concerned as a Red Bull fan. And I think Red Bull fans should be concerned. Yeah, I don't know. But here's the thing. We always say that, it's 70% the car, 30% driver, right? Or ish that. So with that being said, going into the summer break, coming back, they'll learn a lot, whatever. Maybe they Hope come so. back and Checo has his head on. And then instead of it literally just being 70% performance because Checo's doing zero, maybe it'll be like 90 and he'll be back up high in the points. Who knows? I can only hope he's, that, that he's would be not, nice. He hasn't double DNF yet this year. <laughs> and <laughs> slipped into another episode and Bingo. he's not continuously you know landing in p18 19 20 like joe or botas you know what i mean so he's not completely shitting the bed he's just not yeah. driving to the high expectations of everyone at red bull yes it, and it it's the, the 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 disparity is huge but we shall see and hopefully it will go better after a few weeks off maybe Maybe. Well, up next for the podcast, again, TBD. Um, We were not planning on recording this early, but because Carlos and Chaco's seats were finalized, we decided that we needed to do something sooner. So we will be back with you guys next week for some summer break news. If there's absolutely nothing. (laughs) TV. <laughs> maybe an f101 if i if maybe. i can if if we can come up with with a topic um i will be traveling back to arizona and so the locations will be different and we won't have to worry about screaming children outside my window but yeah it's uh, we'll we'll figure out an episode for more summer break adventures here on the going off track podcast yes but also if i feel like it's been a while since we've asked the audience if there's any f101 to- or f1 topic that you'd like Catherine and I to delve into. Let us know in the comments. Always happy to, you know, appease the masses. Yeah. So, but yeah. All right. Well, I'm pissed. I need to go. I'm tired. Drink myself to sleep. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. But that well, has been our our thoughts and reactions to Carlos's seat at Williams, as well as Checo's confirmed seat at Red Bull for the rest of the season. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.